Hello, this is Jane Goodall. What the world needs. First, we need a clear understanding that climate change, loss of biodiversity and the pandemic are all disasters that we brought upon ourselves by our disrespect of nature and animals. Clearly, we need a new relationship with the natural world. We need to understand we can't have unlimited economic development on a planet with finite natural resources and a growing population. Because the lifestyle of the affluent society places an unsustainable demand on the resources of the natural world, we need to change that. We need a new definition of success that doesn't just depend on obtaining wealth and power, but about living in harmony with nature and each other. We must alleviate poverty as the very poor harm the natural world simply in order to survive, cutting down trees to grow more food or make money from charcoal. In cities, the poor buy the cheapest junk food just in order to survive. They're unable to ask if it harmed the environment or is cheap because of unfair wages. We need to phase out industrial farming with its reliance on chemical toxic pesticides and herbicides that are so devastating to biodiversity and kill the soil. We need to move towards small family farms, regenerative agriculture and so on, ban unsustainable commercial fishing and move towards a sustainable plant-based diet. All this for the health of the planet and our own. We must recognize that animals are not just commodities, they're sentient beings, each one crowded in our factory farms, shipped around the world, sold in wildlife markets, suffering in medical and pharmaceutical research labs. Each one is an individual capable of feeling fear, despair and pain. Every business should operate according to sustainable ethical standards that ensure fair wages along the supply chain, support local communities and show respect for the environment. We need to reconnect the natural world of which we are a part and on which we depend. All schools should provide information on climate change, loss of biodiversity and what can be done about it and especially for young children, encourage outdoor education. We all need to understand different cultures and religions and obey the golden rule common to every major religion. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Finally, the world needs hope because without hope we fall into apathy and do nothing and then we're doomed. But each and every one of us needs to take action and understand that we make an impact on the planet every single day and we can choose what sort of impact we make, what we buy, how we treat animals and each other. Millions of ethical choices, even small ones, cumulatively move us towards a better world for all. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome back. We now begin our discussion on relevance of the Jain way of living today with our esteemed guests. We welcome to our e-studio Dr. Kalyan Gangwal, Ms. Sharmila Jain Oswal and Mr. Bipin Chandra Chaugule who will lead the discussion. Dr. Kalyan Gangwal hails from Sangamnir in Maharashtra and has had a brilliant academic and professional mm -hmm. career. He is associated with a number of prestigious institutions such as the KM Hospital, Pune Hospital and the Sasun General Hospital all in Pune. He is a medical practitioner by profession, has chosen vegetarian vegetarianism as one of the subjects of his special interest throughout his life and believes that vegetarian is the ideal food for human beings. Sharmila Jain Oswal is an agropreneur, British scholar and bar at law from England, privileged to work with 
Canadian Prime Minister, Prime Minister of Ireland, and the Indian Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi. She is water leader from NUS Singapore, water diplomat Harvard USA, and Jaina USA Vice Chairman. She is advisor to ISJS International School of Jainism Studies, teaching socio-political status of Jain women. She is chairman Georgia Trade and Investment Corporation and founder of One Organic and Basilia Organics. She is the millet woman of India. She is recipient of Rashtriya Gaurav Puraskar and many national and international awards. Bipin Chandra Chaugule is an award-winning educational media expert with over three decades of experience in educational and informative television as a producer and director. He's an ardent follower of Jain principles. He has directed over 500 educational TV programs, many wildlife films, corporate videos, news stories, social documentaries, and worked on many international projects for BBC, National Geographic, Discovery, and other international channels and agencies. He was a special invitee in 1998 to the International Wildlife Film Festival, Wild Screen of Bristol, UK. Worked as a judge for the International Children's Television Festival in Germany. He is also the founder president of the Association of Left-Handers India and working for the welfare of left-handers and is also an animal activist. So can we uh, begin the discussion? I'm handing over the virtual mic to Mr. Chaugule. Thank you very much, Renu, for the detailed introduction of me and the guests. And I am really glad and privileged to interact with Dr. Gangwal and uh, uh, Sharmila Oswalji, but I feel she's yet not been able to be online. But if she is and if she's able to listen to us, I welcome both of you. Hello, Dash, there she is. So, Hi, can you hear me now? Yeah, of course, very much. Can you hear us? Okay, great, great. Thank Finally, BNCNL Mera Bharat Mahan worked. Absolutely, great, great. Thank you very much. And hope both of you are comfortable. And let's begin yeah. our discussion today. And uh, I would like to begin, ladies first, Sharmila ma'am, with you. Jainism is often criticized or commented as a very difficult to follow principles and also a passive religion which does not react to the happenings around. What is your say on that? And also, with, I'd like to know, today we are in a very dire war situation. Can Jainism be of any guidance to that? Uh, in fact, it is a, such a fantastic uh, question, especially when we are going through this, uh, you know, war situation and whatever we are seeing, Russia and Ukraine. In fact, I would like to give the answer of this question uh, with me being water diplomat. And I was at Palestine for the water security issues. And you know, Gaza Pitti and uh, this particular belt, how they are like uh, rigorously fighting for water. So. Uh, when I went to Palestine and I was on the border of Palestine, Israel and Jordan, and uh, just I want to share that what Jainism can bring actually. And then whatever the statement you quoted that passive and not reacting and how the world reacts towards us. So me being a diplomat and the water arbitrator, Jordan River is the world's like religious river, similar like Ganges. So they observed my lifestyle. And as you know, I being a Jain, uh, I had all my food with me and then I was not eating there unless, you know, I know that it is uh, extremely, uh, you know, vegetarian or vegan. So they observed my lifestyle because I carried the entire food and, the, you know, I used to cook there. So Jordan's king and then the Sheikh Imam Mustafa in Palestine, you know, it's a hardcore meat eater and Islamic country. So they observed me because I was there for the months, times, and then how many days you can live without eating food? So... They observed me like my lifestyle, then the holistic way of uh, every day, you know, uh, resolving the solutions of the conflict. So they observed that I'm not eating meat, I'm not eating anything, and then the some rituals uh, I'm following. So they started calling me. They gave me title as the angel. That angel has come to resolve their issue. And uh, I want to share with you that with the you know this kind of issue and the, it's a war situation. I mean, there every day there are like fights. So 
because of the journey from philosophy to ahimsa or uh, anekandwad this particularly philosophy and the fundamentals i used for this kind of conflicts and the uh, peaceful settlement so if there can be the ways and in fact these dharma gurus were very much eager to meet our jain monks uh, in fact they asked me that can they meet jain monks so now when you uh, put the question as that you know jainism as passive or rather i would say that jainism can act as a catalyst as a in fact also a facilitator where we can bring the you know peace and i think uh, jainism is the i think way advanced way uh, you know beyond and the, i think in the liberal terms of the liberalism so i think jainism it, it, it can be act uh, can act as a great catalyst uh, in the war situation thank you thank you very much that was a wonderful experience to share and also wonderful insight into how jainism can be of great help uh, dr gangwal uh, i would directly go to the vegetarianism aspect that ma'am ma explained that vegetarianism or veganism which is very close to jain principles is often again criticized that we cannot get vitamin b12 vitamin d and some proteins from vegetable on vegetarian diet and that is only available in animal products what is your take on it chogale ji sharmila ji jay janendra i am dr gangwal i am a physician a cardiologist practicing for last 50 years and a post graduate teacher of pune university and i am very happy to tell you i am a gold medalist throughout my career as a teacher i would like to tell you that this is a myth that vitamin d and b12 are not in the uh, vegetarian food in fact there is a plenty of b12 and vitamin d in our diet if we take a very balanced diet as a doctor as a physician i would certainly recommend that for taking the uh, having a b12 our requirement of the b12 is absolutely minimal and don't keep on comparing the b12 levels of our indian population with the western population who are eating the meat every day so our requirement our normal values are much lower than the rest of the western world so we cannot compare everything with the, with them another thing is that when we are taking a milk and milk product there is a plenty of vitamin b12 which is there even a sprouted food whatever we are taking and third important thing that we are forgetting is that our colon bacteria they synthesize b12 and that b12 is enough for us to live very healthy life i am a vegetarian strong vegetarian i am 77 today i i am in a sambhal shikhar and i walk 9 kilometers on the top of the hill without any problem and way jain way of life is ideal way of life this is all myth which is spread by the allopaths allopaths and a wrong medical knowledge which has been given which has come from the western society which is a meat eater society so i will tell you that you don't get a deficiency of b12 you expose yourself to the sunlight you will get plenty of vitamin d you eat a sprouted food you take a milk and milk product and don't disturb your gut flora by taking the vitamins uh, antibiotics every now and then what is happening in our country is that people are taking the antibiotics every minor thing which is absurd and because of that our flora of the gut is changed and they are not been able to synthesize adequate vitamin b12 so it is wrong to say that we suffer from this thing in fact the longevity of the life is more with the vegetarian people it has been accepted it has been known and the recent study which is done in the switzerland we say that a longevity of the life is a more with vegetarianism vegetarian people live 13 years more than a non veg people if they follow the right lifestyle and this is a research it is a research which has been published and even eating less which is a part and a parcel of a jain philosophy we observe the non violence in our food also so we are strict vegetarian and we care for every living creature on the earth and that is really is reflected in our diet and that's the vegetarianism i'm proud to tell you that <laughs> because of my mission in last 50 years of my mission of spreading vegetarianism all over the world in the i remember the days when 50 years back when i started talking about vegetarianism i was a gold medalist in medicine they say what nonsense you are talking about our allopathy always says that uh, you have to take a non veg food for a first class protein b12 b12 and d but i started talking to them on the scientific ground and proved that large number of vegetarian animals which are very close to the human beings live longer and a very very healthy life 
And that's the reason I would tell you that, well, you don't require this sort of nonsense things. And this is a wrong thing. In a corona period also, it was advised that to become a healthy and to improve your uh, resistance power, you start taking a eggs and knowledge food. It was absolutely absurd. It came from the philosophy of the people or doctors who have written our medical books. There's nothing like a first class protein. There's nothing like a second class protein. And we get adequate vitamins. You look at our saints and monks. They walk, they do take food only once in a day. Take the water, Jain Digambar Muni. Takes the water only once in a day, once in a day. And they walk 20, 30 kilometers a day in the sun without having any problem. And they live more than 100 years, which is very, very common for them. So that's what I'm telling you. These wrong ideas are to be taken away from the medical profession totally, which I am trying my best to do that. And I'm very proud to tell you in the last 50 years of my practice, I have turned not less than 30 to 40 lakhs people from change their lifestyle, change their non-vegetarian food habit to the vegetarian food habits. And that's the reason my book name is included in Guinea's Book of World Record and Golden Book of World Record for doing this kind of activity. And one thing is that Jain, Jainism is a way of life. And I observe that. Even me at the age of just 77, I am fit. I take food only once a day. I observe the choya. I don't take water after sunset. Even no food, nothing. But you can keep yourself very, very healthy with the Jain way of living. And that is the reason why it is becoming very popular uh, lifestyle. And in the corona period, you will get surprised that the vegetarianism is growing in the China also. Look at the China Shanghai Times. Shanghai Times says that 30 percent, 20 to more than 20 percent of the Chinese are going vegetarian after the corona. Wow, that's really great. That's exactly, that is yeah. exactly what is happening all over the world because the non vegetarian food habits is the main cause for the virus which is spreading. Look at the Spanish flu, look at Ebola, swine flu. All these diseases have come from the animal and from the meat. And in the future, if you want to protect ourselves, well, change your lifestyle, change your diet, be vegetarian, be healthy. Because meat is a murder. Meat is a murder in the sense you cannot have the meat unless you murder the animal. And animal lovers all over the world are growing in a very, very large extent, whether it is Europe or whether it's America. Large number of vegans are growing all over the world. And I'm very happy the day is going to come that almost 50% of the world population is going to be vegetarian after 50 years. And that is exactly what is the prediction. Because to save the globe, to save our earth, there is no other choice left to us rather than becoming vegetarian and vegetarian. That's a wonderful and a profound message to the world from the Jain uh, principles and Jainism. Just now, before our program, we heard a wisdom bite from Dr. Jane Goodall, a very prominent wildlife uh, expert. She also pro uh, propounded the same principle that animals and environment should be looked after, should be looked at very compassionately. And the same message Jainism is given. Thank you, doctor, for a wonderful insight into the your lifestyle and the Jain way of living. And also, I'm really glad to know that you are at Sammet Shikharji. Sammet Shikharji, for those who don't know, where 22 out of 24 Tirthankars of Jain uh, religion uh, uh, went to Nirvana, they uh, attained Nirvana, and that's why it's the holiest place on earth, I would say. So we are glad to connect you with you from that place. So in a way, we are also getting the aura and the energy from that holy place. Thank you for being there, and thank you for uh, connecting with us. Now I come to Sharmila ji. Uh, we were talking about the uh, prof profoundness and greatness of Jainism. So could you throw some light about the ancient status of women in Jain religion of Jain women. You know, we often say that women were not uh, free. They were bound like laborers or slaves and they were not given education early in early times. But I think the Jain uh, religion had a different story to tell. And what is that? Uh, in fact, uh, I'm extremely proud to be a Jain woman, Jain mother, Jain daughter, Jain wife. Uh, because uh, if you see the pre-Rigveda or pre-Vedic period or, uh, you know, right from the Rishabh Deva, Rishabh Deva, Bhagwan, first Tithankar Bhagwan had two daughters, Brahmi and Sundi. So if you see, they acquired 64, uh, you know, this class arts, they, 
and uh, so even tirthan karas mothers they were extremely privileged if you see that time i mean even uh, during the time of tirthan karas that was the most modern time for the women if you see the chandan wala and with the 36000 sadhvi jis like nuns they were been given the shelter uh, they were given they were also been given the you know uh, under the uh, chandan wala so that time i mean the philosophy i mean there will be a definitely uh, two different path uh, i mean kind of perspectives on that that women can get get liberalize a liberal i mean salvation so i mean a uh, bhagwan mavira in fact uh, according to me was most modern most liberal uh, in fact presently i find um, monks sadhu sadhvis and uh, i don't know there is so much discrimination so i really feel that present generation may go away from jainism because uh, like you know that women because i hear in hindi you know in the homes they call or even i've heard from the monks that पाप किया है तो यू नो स्त्री का जन्म मिलता है या नरक में जाओगे स्त्री हो तो बट देन आई फाइंड ऑन द कॉन्ट्ररी सोशल पोलिटिकल स्टेटस ऑफ जैन वुमेन वर एक्सट्रीमली हाई इफ यू सी ऑल द मदर्स इफ यू सी आई मीन रानी अबा का क्वीन फ्रॉम द कर्नाटक किंगडम द वे शी फॉट विथ पोर्तुगीज यू सी द क्वीन्स इन कर्नाटक मिनी क्वींस आई मीन दे वर द ग्रेट वॉरियर्स दे वर द ग्रेट मिलिटेंस दे वर uh the great warrior strategies they were the artists and even the nor i mean uh, compared to north india south india had more privileged women because they were highly educated and if you see every kingdom these queens they contributed on the terms of literature uh, building temples uh, even vaya vach that is shramni bhagwan so i find that uh, socio political status women were very high but post independence that is after india got the independence and in fact rather earlier it was much better now i find that there is a huge discrimination so uh, i mean there is a lot of difference so i really feel and i sincerely feel that present monks sadhu sadhvi jis of the our i mean the whole sect all the sect should uh, you know take jainism as a as a universal leader where women the women's privilege to be given as they were from the mahavira's time or from the rishabdev bhagwan's time how they heat i mean imagine rishabdev bhagwan's time period so old that time his both daughters and brahmi lipis because of her and the all kind of education they both got after that chandan bala you see i mean all the profound ladies or rani abaka or so many queens of south india we see uh, even postal stamp is there on her on the queen's name how many jains knows this that there is a postal stamp on this uh, you know queen's name i am sure nobody knows i am sure nobody knows that jain women were the warriors they were the militants they were the planning the strategies of the wars can you imagine this so they were so powerful so we need to nourish nurture the similar socio political status of earlier era which were there during the tirthankar time absolutely this history should come this is prehistoric and historical uh, facts which are not even taught in the schools not known to jains themselves so it's a wonderful insight that you have uh, li- thrown light on and really thankful to the about that so dr gangwal coming to you uh, you have been a crusader of anti drugs and anti narcotics and anti uh, you know in, uh, intoxicating things like tobacco and uh, uh, gutka and other things so how can jainism and even worldwide drug abuse and you know drug menace is too much india too is part of that punjab we here that is all in fact infested with drug use so how can we guide the world in that as jains you your voice is not there uh hello yeah ah yeah. let me tell you Yeah, that uh, I was a pioneer in anti-gutka movement, and I'm proud yeah. to tell you because of my efforts, the government had to ban the gutka because I proved that how gutka was poisonous and how the katha, the kateju, the lime, tobacco, betel nut, and number of chemicals were so harmful to the health, and that's the reason ultimately the gutka was banned. I'm very happy to tell you. One thing is certain: the Jain Jeevan Shaili. you know jain lifestyle is a one of wonderful lifestyle which tell keeps you away from all addictions and all the voices because that is exactly what the tirthankaras have told us or taught us and i am very proud to tell you that it has been proved beyond a doubt now 
the jain religion is the oldest religion on the earth it is a pre vedic it has been said by the tilak and radha krishnan and everybody in their books that even the aryan came from the north pole the jains were existing in india and they were called as a dravids dravid sanskriti and actually that it is the oldest religion on the earth harappa mohenjodaro they have given a proof that indus valley people were following the jainism and the jainism is a way of life every jain shravak follows a four uh, five anuvrat one is a satya ahinsa aparigraha brahmacharya all these things you know when they come in your life not only you will become away from all the addictions and i'm very proud to tell you that a jain way of life is a lifestyle which teaches you that to remain away from this thing and today whatever the world is going away from this jain principles they are getting caught by the drugs and as we know what is the menace which is happening in the bollywood what is happening they are ideal for our young generations and they are all drugist and they are spoiling their life and the jain religion teaches you because you once you become a shravaka in the sense of follower because the jain religion has got sadhu sadvi shravak shavika shavak and shavika they are all away from all kind of addictions because in the samantabhadra acharya says that sapta vyasana tyag is a first step to become a jain and that is exactly what is ideal so in the western world also you will find that large number of people are following the jainism they are not converted because the jain is the only religion in the world who never forced anybody to change their religion ever though large number of jains were massacred and they were forced to change their religion but that is the reason because the jain jeevan shaili which has been described by the samantabhadra acharya in the shavaka achar is a ideal way of living because it is a way of living how to live and how to die all that is been taught by the jainism and today if everybody wants to follow the peaceful life peaceful life a very very uh, life which is now what is happening in the uh, ukraine and russia all these things when we look at it the way is uh, your outlook and that outlook what should be the your outlook is been taught in the jainism bhagwan mahavira always said always always keep your vivek jagrat in the sense be always always jagrat in the sense that whatever you are looking at it look at that different angle and anekantvad in the sense every question has got two different angles and if you start looking from the both different angles you can change and as i told you mahatma gandhi gave the world ahimsa as a one of the biggest weapon and that was exactly the gift of religion jain religion to the kavi and that is exactly what uh, shri mat rachandra was really a pioneer to give the ahimsa to the world and that is the reason why i am telling you to remain de addicted to remain happy the way of living to follow the jainism as a way of life fantastic that was really very very uh, great explanation and i hope that we as jains or we uh, as an indians can uh, you know propagate this message to the whole world regarding how jain principles can really really ease the life and ease the uh, conflicts happening all around sharmila ji coming to you regarding this how much is there a scope for studies in jainism all around the world so you have been telling so can jain studies be a career to somebody uh in fact uh, today we are in the world of itc everywhere if you see the it and the uh, you know the way i mean world is going towards ai artificial intelligence now everybody thinks that there is no scope in jainism or maybe a very very limited but you will surprise to know that well i myself being as a vice chairman academic committee of jaina in 40 universities of united states of america we run the programs we run the jain chair uh in us in europe uh in all over the world and in fact you will be surprised to know that all non indians in fact maximum non indians are studying jainism so you can say either masters or the phd uh, in fact most of the jain chairs i mean only of the tirthankara so uh, we have the vacancies as a uh, professor uh, as a vc vice chancellor as a dean uh you know right from florida to los angeles california 
everywhere uh, we have set up these chairs i mean from this uh, you know jaina committees all these great donors who has uh, given the huge contributions for setting up the chairs now imagine there dr christopher miller is a very popular name who's jaina chair uh, at the same time uh, i mean everywhere if you see the winter program summer program there are all these non indians non jains are taking keen interest on studying jainism and on the contrary very unfortunate that uh, i mean i have not found a honestly a you know even a good fraction number of jain students studying or taking interest in jainism so i think there is a lack of knowledge people don't know and even in india whatever jain chairs we have established or we have jain chairs i'm very sorry but the way the work should have been done because there is a huge gap there is no happening there is something which is missing between the present generation even let me tell you like suppose i am a mother my son is like 22 year old if i am not able to give him a foundation of jainism in a right way then i don't think we would be able to save jainism from the future so even when we say that war and all these situation in jainism will act as a crusader imagine if the present generation is going away because we are not able to give them the right education whereas we are the much more having in abundance of the philosophy side if you see jainism is a school of thought of aparigra of anekantva or jainism as a lifestyle but what happens it has been you know um, uh, cumulatively uh, comprehensively made in the uh, aloo pyaaz potato and the uh, onions and the food uh, religion basically yes. and the all uh, just going to temples or following some rituals so it has become a religion of all rituals and trust me present generation is going away so if you need to save this i mean present generation needs to be aware that look i mean if you are going planning to study abroad there are huge options to study jainism abroad and then imagine once you are a specialist in jainism abroad there is ample of scope getting a good jobs in the universities itself and you yourself can be an ambassador secondly we can train our all mothers women because they are the one who is going to be the another ambassador to take this whole entire thing ahead you know otherwise all the scriptures literature there is no point because who is going to i mean you know uh, truly represent uh, jainism so i mean academically jainism has a huge scope uh, all the students need to you know know and understand F- and uh, honestly we are all open to give this all information and uh, please be pre- prepared to study you know jainism in a much scientific way in a much 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 you know super duper way wonderful wonderful thank you very much that was great so i uh, suggest all those who are watching and listening if you want to take up jainism as a study uh, india in india as well as abroad there is a huge scope and uh, you can explore all those possibilities because the world is going to need guidance of jain principles in future a lot so better study and be the guide uh, again i have an appeal for the people who are watching and listening if you have any questions kindly post them on the facebook page or on the youtube comments box and we will definitely try and you know address those questions so now coming to dr gangwal sir we discussed about physical health uh, there is a psychological and mental side about health as well and today we see a lot of psychological unhappiness people are dissatisfied with their life relationships are not going well people feel lonely people feel they have not met their right partner or their right uh, spouse and there is a unhappiness there is a lot of infidelity and other things how jain principles can guide in this yeah yeah jain principle can guide a lot from this point of view after all looking at the first health as a doctor i will say that what is after all health it is a jubilant state of well being not only physical but mental and social too yes. in the sense that only physically strong person is not a healthy person he has to be mentally strong and he, even he will be socially strong in the sense society also has to be healthy i was surprised to have the in a conference on non violence in boston that time in fact uh, uh, it was found uh, kid that while defining the uh, uh, the health he came on the platform and he said 
that your mental health is not very important your physical health is not important your social health is not important but most important part of your life is your spiritual health your spiritual health improves your mental and physical and social health will improve and that exactly the message i want to give you that improve our spiritual health once your spiritual health is improved everything will change everything will change and jainism is basically important to improve your spiritual health if you are spiritually healthy you can be mentally healthy physically healthy because at today's state what we find all the whatever the conflicts which are coming up whatever the ill health which is coming up as a doctor as a consultant i will tell you that 90% of our patients are coming today who are suffering from so called you know psychosomatic disorder what is means a psychosomatic disorder in the sense that your soma means body and psyche is a mind when your mind is ill your soma becomes ill and that is exactly is a definition of psychosomatic disease in fact the great author johnson writes in his book he says that the sorrow that does not come out in form of tears makes the organ cry in the sense if your emotions are been suppressed then they will make your organ cry your heart start crying you get heart attack and blood pressure your stomach start crying you will get acidity and uh, uh, ibs or so called gastric ulcers and all these disorders are not because of any foreign organism or any virus entering your body they are all effect of your emotional stress which is acting on your body and the jainism is basically stresses on relief of all the stress in your life you go to the temple just like i have a habit in the morning hours after bath i go to the temple worship the god for 10 minutes and i find that i get energy for 24 hours 24 hours that is exactly what is happening in a jain way of living we do the samayak in the sense we do the pratikraman all these kriyas whatever we are doing it definitely make you very very physically mentally and socially healthy and spiritually healthy and that is exactly the way of living jainism always teaches you how to live a healthy life how to live a enjoyable life it is not that uh, when you put a lot of restriction on you you become unhealthy just like because i am a strict strong jain a, a very uh, strong follower of jainism i don't eat underground i don't eat after sunset i even don't take water after sunset but this is definitely good for health and you realize it you teach this to your young people even my grandson and my children i keep on telling them they follow and then find that if it is useful they will follow because now they don't understand the language of a pap and a punya that you do this thing you will get punya you do this you will get pap no pap and punya ki language abhi logon ko samajhti nahi hai whatever the language that you are going to understand is that you have to say why and if you have been able to give the proper answer to the why the people change i know because of my motivation and my lectures on not eating after sunset large number of the foreigners today i at least have a, li- a list of 3 to 4000 foreigners doctors who are not eating after sunset and they are observing the joya in the sense they are not taking in the water after sunset and large number of the people they had a psychosomatic disorder themselves even a the doctors but they have been out of it completely so that is the reason i am telling you the jain way of living is a key solution prescription for a modern life modern way of living only thing is that our saints our monks they don't teach this way they keep on telling you do this do that do that but they don't tell you they want to do in your life and that is exactly what we are trying to okay and what the sharmila is also doing sharmila is going doing a really great job he is propagating the jainism in the right direction and that is exactly need of the modern society modern society our ancients all these teachers great great teachers the way they have explained you will you will get surprised that in our tatvarth sutra written by uma swati there is a description of the atom even there is a description of the atom in that book indicating that they had a tremendous knowledge and even in Absolutely. the tatvarth said that if you break the atom you will get a tremendous amount of the energy or the sense all these things written in the book only thing that given about the principle of god particle which was fascinated the world everything is described in our ancient uh, books ancient books go to the bandarkar institute and find out our scripts 
India mm -hmm. a lot of scientific information there, but it has not been properly put up to our Jain community or even other community. Now, with the new modern uh, philosophy and a modern uh, way of teaching, now the whole our education system is getting changed. I am sure yes. that the press will be given on these issues and uh, really samskaras will be taught to you right from the childhood and then they will follow the samskara, Gurukul samskara, how they were powerful and how they made a man very happy, non-violent and that is the reason the Jain religion is the only religion in the world which is a non-violent religion and today even what the Abdul Kalam said when he felicitated me in the Vidyan Bhavan that time he is a pure vegetarian and yes. I asked him that, sir, what is the new weapon that you are going to invent? He said, no, there are only two weapons which are going to be required by the world. One is a non-violence, is one, one very important weapon in the world and that is exactly Ahinsa and Satya. There are only two weapons which will definitely create a peace in the world, peace in the world. And this has been taught by our Tirthankaras, Bhagavan Mahavir, and all the Tirthankaras. Another wrong myth which people have, the Mahavir is not a founder of our Jainism, Jain religion. Absolutely. Tirthankara, Adinath Bhagwan. Just now Sharmila was describing about the Brahmi, Sundari, Bhagwan, Bahubali, Bharat. And you will get, you will really know the new books which has been written now will definitely tell you that a Bharat is called Bharat is called on the name of Bharat, which was a son of, son of Rishabdev. That is, I am not telling you this. This has been written yeah. in the Vedas, Rugvedas, and all Upanishads. They mentioned that this Bharat was the son of Adinath, and Adinath mm -hmm. was placed by in the Vedas also. And that exactly proves mm -hmm. that the Jain religion is a pre Vaidic religion, the ancient religion on the earth on the earth which is going to create a peace on the earth and definitely going to protect the ecology and our Priyavaran. If you want to save it, you have to be no way, no way to follow the Jain philosophy, Jain way of life. Yes, thank you. That was a wonderful and very detailed insight into how Jainism could be of help into future generations because the new young generation does not obey your rules or your commands because you are elder. They want to know the cause and effect relationship. Yes, and yes. That's how we need why? to, yes, why? If I do this, why should I do this? What will happen? then the reasoning should be given in a proper manner the way you have explained it to the generation and they will definitely follow. And the whole world, today everybody thinks they are scientific. They want scientific reasoning. They want scientific uh, proofs that yes, this is this. And only then people will follow and I'm really great. Even to the extent as a doctor, I will tell you, go to the all international con uh, congresses and all the conferences of uh, heart disease and uh, cancer. In every conference, all the top leaders of the doctors in the world are telling you stop non veg food because one of the major causes of cancer is a non veg food. Major okay. cause of the heart disease is a non veg food. Major cause of the degenerative disorder is a non veg food. So the world wholly changing, wholly changing towards a vegetarianism, towards a vegetarianism and plant based vegan lifestyle, vegan lifestyle, yes. which is a totally non violent lifestyle. Absolutely. Even vegan ji, I want to add yeah. to uh, uh, Dr. Yeah, yeah, Kalyanji. Uh, I want to add that before eating sunset, now see the present uh, world where it is going intermittent fasting. Now, if you yeah. tell today's generation yeah. intermittent fasting, <laughs> yeah, very, Jain very, Jain. you know, and then you people are charging bomb. People are yeah, charging we much for that. We, we do the <laughs> exactly. Bhyasa. We do the yes. discussion. All these are nothing but fasting, which is a key for a healthy life. Key for Absolutely. a healthy life. And all over the world, the world, the Western world is suffering from the great major problem of heart disease, cancer, obesity. All can be sorted out with this one way of even a dietary restriction, which has been observed in Jainism and Jain yeah. way of life. One, one uh, thing that we observe, it may look funny, but now everybody is using a mask to prevent organisms entering your body and going out. This is taught by Jainism. 
Yes. Way, way back in, in ancient time. times. And now what yeah. is following? And cleanliness, keep your hands clean, keep yeah. your face clean. Everything is there in Jainism since beginning. Coming Even uh, to the extent, use of water. You will get yes. surprised that the Jain monks and we Shravak use the water also with a great care. We don't yes. waste the water also. Even That's the Jain right. monks, they use the minimal water. They use the warm water to drink. And after some time, because we believe that even a Jal, jal is a jeev in the sense a living creature and your behavior with every living creature on the earth should be with the harmonious without disturbing them without killing them and that is exactly the principle which is following that the, the water scarcity also can be definitely sorted out yeah, and you will get surprised at acharya badrabahu acharya badrabahu who was actually was a guru for chandragupta maurya who was a Sambrak of this one, Afghanistan, all these areas were under his conquer. Whole India was under his conquer. He became a Jain monk and he took the Diksha from Bahu. and at Shavan Belgola, he did the Salekhna in the sense in the end, he tried, stopped everything, even water and food and left his yeah. body in a peace, great peace, the great, uh, the process of how to die because Jainism does not teach you how to live. But the Jainism teaches you how to die. Art of dying is also taught by the Jainism to the world, yeah. which is now getting followed all over the world. I'm going to come to you about that. I will ask one more question to Sharmila ji and then we'll discuss about Salekana. Uh, Sharmila ji, exploiting, exploitation of nature, exploitation of natural wealth is happening so indiscriminately. Animal abuse is increased to such a rampant level. And people, on the other hand, talk about carbon footprint and global warming and how to reduce. And there are conferences spending billions of dollars discussing and inventing things and trying to research simplest ways or simplest principles that Jainism can. How can Jainism tell the world that these things need not don't need billions of dollars? They need a few of changing of lifestyle. Can you please throw some light on that? Uh, sorry, in fact, there is uh, some sound in my background because I'm in Udaipur in a wedding. So please bear with me. But this is a yeah, beautiful fine. question, a beautiful question, because I am chart myself is a chartered environmentalist and I become environmentalist because of Bhagwan Mahavira's philosophy. Live and let live. So live it, let live. Imagine there is a world in it. You don't need to go to NASA for that. I mean, whole NASA is given by our Tithankaras, but we don't yes. value it. Because everything which comes to us so easy, we don't value it. That is for sure. So if you see, either it is a eco-friendliness. If you see Jala Tattva, Vayu Tattva, you know, this Prithvi Tattva. These all Tattvas, all together, uh, you know, making it together. There then United States of America says US GBC, that is a, a, you know, green building concept. Now, if you see, Jainism has a strong foundation on all these basic philosophies, the basic fundamentals, even Pudgal Paramanu or Sagropam. If you see our all this, uh, you know, thousands of years ago, we have spoken about the Pudgal Paramanu. Now we are yes. talking about the nuclear. Im imagine this is Absolutely. all predicted by Bhagwan Mavira. So we are just not able to, you know, I think uh, we are just taking it everything for granted, you know, especially, I mean, you know, I'm very sorry to say, but we as a Jains, we, we have just simply taken it for granted. If you see the whole world needs this direction. See, imagine this just now Bipinji mentioned that we are putting the mask, which is already there, you know, uh, in our Jainism from the day one. Now, Absolutely. everywhere, either it is a compassion, you know, like plant based diet or anywhere. I think we do not have anything that where cruelty comes. Even Ahinsa means not that killing somebody. But even talking loudly, you know, abusing or even subordination. If I'm not allowing my subordinate or my colleague to go ahead on talents, that is also, you know, hinsa. Because Absolutely. the whole philosophy is to respect bhava. Where is that bhav? So considering this carbon neutrality, let me tell you, we all are hypocrites. It's all double standard whatever side we will say live and let live but at the same time you will see 
I will take purse which is of leather, my leather shoes. I want to wear a good leather watch. Then where are all the fundamentals? Because in my day-to-day -day life, it is not that only not eating garlic or not eating you know onions and uh, uh, potatoes yeah. makes you jan. But the right way, if I want to live a eco-friendly life, I should definitely work on my own sustainability. What kind of clothes Absolutely. I'm wearing? Is there any kind of hinsa? If I'm wearing the silk mm -hmm. clothes, because there is a hinsa. So what kind of sustainability lifestyle I have? So forget about the carbon footprints. It is a very, very way beyond. Small, small things in my day-to-day -day life, what chappals I'm wearing or what uh, watch I'm wearing, if I'm conscious, mindfulness is there, then very well, live and let live. This tatwa can be lived so beautifully. And the world, in fact, right now, climate change, smart agriculture, this has all been very beautifully laid by the Bhagwan Mahavira. It's just Absolutely. that we are not propagating, you know. We are, I, I tell you, I, I'm very angry with ourselves, actually, you know. I'm really angry because we are not able to preserve, restore our heritage. Look at it. Louvre Museum have millions of visitors in that museum. Whereas you see all the Jain scriptures in Pune, Bandarkar Prachavidya. How many people go there for Jain yes. literature? I, I, I don't think so, you know. So this is what is a whole, whole, whole dilemma. So we are yes. the not religion, but we are the most eco-friendly. I mean, whatever Griha certification is there, LEED is there. You know, this is all. See, after America does patenting, then we realize, uh, you know, that this is our own heritage. We own it. We own it. We want to have it. True, yeah. true, true. Thank In you. Fact, wonderful. Our, I mean, yeah. This, now, Ahinsa is absolutely foundation of our lifestyle. We look for ha, ahinsa in each and everything while eating, while sleeping. As you know very well, the great Acharya, Acharya Vidyasagar, who, who just now we had a way, I met him and I was with him for 15 days. He sleeps only on one side in the whole night, does not change the side also because he's worried because at night there's even a small creature will die if you turn his body. In the sense, such an extreme ahimsa, this very people extreme, are follow. Very and this ahimsa is a foundation, foundation, foundation for everything. Yeah. Every single, single problem of the world can be definitely solved by the, our agamas, our Jain literature, our Jain acharyas. They have discussed each and everything. You will surprisingly find that in the 6th century, there was a literature where the Jain acharya had written Pushpa Ushadi, Pushpa Ushadi aroma therapy. And he has described yeah. 50, 56,000 flowers and their use and their season and their properties. So they Everything are very yes, recorded. They're not Everything very is meditators. Recorded. They're not very sannyasi, but they were meditators. If you go to the South India, they are called as a, in the ancient time, they were Pallis. Palli means Gurukul, Patshala. And the Jain monks, used to teach the people and they were expert in different different sciences like Padartha Vidyan, Rasayan, medical science and you will get surprised that in the Bhandarka Institute also there was a one book which has been written by Jain Acharya which is on the Kama Sutra in the sense how to you ex exactly be uh, 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 put a border to the sex life also and how you can enjoy the sex life with all boundaries. A Jain Acharya has got such a great vision in the sense when we talk about a Brahmacharya it does not mean that we have to stop the sex activity but he says oh. that only with, uh, with one person and that is exactly your wife and all other things are different. So the Brahmacharya, Aparigraha, Satya, Ahinsa, all, all these are the solutions yeah. for the world. If There's you one very Kapunaha, you will be the greatest socialist in the world. All the communist yeah. therapy, yes, and many times I find that Karl Marx must have read the Jain Agam and found how the Jain people were so socialistic in the sense they concerned about each and everything. Just now, Sharmila was telling me about your servants, about your neighbor, about your everybody, and that is exactly the Aparigraha. That whatever is required for you, you keep it yourself and rest you share. And that is the reason you will find the Jain people are the biggest donors on the in the India. Maximum yes. uh, books are, are run by the Jains. Maximum donation schools you'll find are donated by the Jain people because this Aparigraha is there in their life because we keep for ourselves and rest donate. 
even in i am telling you for last 50 years i keep only 50% of my income with me and 50% i spend for propagating the vegetarianism supporting in animal rights talking about uh, against the voices uh, even spend all that money on this and not a single pie i have taken as a donation from anybody for this wow point. and that is exactly exactly my religion has taught me to do this and that is exactly to be taught just shalila was telling me that these principles are to be taught to our jain young generation and yes. that is not done properly so much no, no, no. yeah we have to change the education system and in the sanskaras what we call as sanskaras even a gurukul ka paddhati will be coming and you will be surprising the our, our the next educational policy which is going to come by the can uh, the central government in this one acharya vidyasagar kasuri rangan they are great people have been advisor and they are giving all these our old old knowledge to the modern uh, this thing we don't hate english we don't hate other language but we prefer that our whole language should come then mother language first and after mother language the rest of the languages should come and that is the way of teaching and growing you go to the japan you go to the germany they even though they know english they will not talk to you in english they will talk to you in their german language their mother japan, tongue very nice nice so uh, so Dr. Sir, uh, we are, yeah if i go unfortunately talk, we are coming to the end of the if session if i keep on talking in hindi and even in the marwadi community i keep on talking on marwadi they say what a foolish fellow and old traditional fellow is there he is not yeah. a modern dog so that I is know. exactly what Uh, Now we have almost come to the end of our session, but I would request you to please throw some light on a very, very unique thing about Jainism that is called. We recently here heard that Switzerland is thinking of creating peaceful death, uh, you know, capsules or yes. channels kind yes. of thing. And yeah. Jainism has this Salekhana or Santhara as a very traditional, ancient uh, way of giving up your life when you are not yes. able. Yes. Yeah, yeah, just now I had to you. Throw a little bit of light because only we have one minute in a short. In fact, the yeah. Jain uh, way of living, they teach you how to live and they teach you how to die. Yeah, and, and exactly you yourself has die. declared, I think, that is exactly that even Chandragupta Maurya did the salakna and left his body. It has been not; uh, it is in the Jainism, and from the Jainism, it has been taken by the other religion also. You'll find the Veer Savarkar did the same thing. Bhishma Patamah did the same thing. all these people they did the salekna vrat and then left their body in the sense whenever you are old whenever you feel that you are not going to survive instead of going on a ventilator instead of going on a dialysis instead of having the large number of the chemotherapies and when the advanced cancer when you know that your end is close you be yourself and that exactly the jain dharm teaches you and to die very peacefully and with a full full understanding that i am going to leave this world very happily and peacefully and that is the reason why we find large number of people all over the world they are talking about dying with dignity in the sense just like we have a right to die a uh, live with dignity we have a right to die with dignity and when i want that well i don't want this treatment to be done i don't want icu i don't want a chemotherapy i don't want a dialysis maybe palliative It's medicine right to die and that is exactly has been accepted by the norway and number of countries where it is been allowed and this is exactly the ancient jain way of living in fact in the shavaka even our muni our uh, you know, all the monks they live the same way they live their body very peacefully and with a full this thing just like in a maharaj tukaram says majhe marana mya dola pahile sohola to jhala anupamya in the sense very my death i am looking at myself is coming to me but it is a wonderful thing what the nyaneshwar died did it in sanjeevan samadhi at alandi it is a great salekhna because after all in the full sense he has left his body and that is exactly the highest way or highest peak of your life kalash so every shravaka every uh, jain person wants the way you have to live and the kalash should be salekhna the way of dying beautifully dying beautifully dying Thank you very much. That was a wonderful end, and uh, we unfortunately have come to the end of our session. <laughs> and it was really nice interacting with you. And I hand it over to uh, Renu ji to uh, conclude the session. Thank, Thank you. you. Do we have Thank any questions? I don't think. Uh, I don't think there are any questions from audience. Anyway, please go ahead. Thank you. 
Thank you for your enlightening discussion. We thank you, Dr. Kalyan Gangwal, Ms. Sharmila Jain Oswal, and Mr. Bipin Chandra Chaugule for being IFSI guests. We will begin our next session, Spirituality in Leadership, at 1.45 p.m. See you then.